Wow. Hey, welcome back to Courageous Media. This is Chris. Thanks so much for joining me. Today, we have got to have a conversation about what went down at James River Church with John Lindell and Mark Driscoll. It is making the rounds of the internet. Today, we're going to jump into that video. We're going to watch what happened where Mark Driscoll got kicked off stage. Before we do, if you could, please smash that like button, subscribe. Let us know how we're doing in the comments. We really appreciate you coming along on this journey with us. Today, we're going to have some hard conversations as a family. Thanks so much for being here, Courageous Army. Appreciate everyone. Love you, all your support. So now, without further ado, let's jump into this whole clip. since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you. And I want to be very careful with this and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. Okay, before we dive deeper, let's first talk about just what's happening here. So we've got a men's conference at James River Church, the Stronger, I believe it's called the Stronger Men's Conference. It's a paid event. Uh, you had to buy tickets. And you've got this cringeworthy entertainment with um, a gentleman who rips his shirt off. Now, evidently, this gentleman used to be a male stripper. That is accurate. Uh, evidently, he uh, come to find out he is now a born again believer. He's put all that behind. But still, this this performance with what I mean, it may not have intended that way, but it looks like a stripper pole. Uh, he swallow. You're going to see him swallow a sword. All of that. It's just. Is this really how you want to open your men's conference? I mean, just the fact that it's cringeworthy and many of the attendees of the show said as much. They said in texts and, and tweets and other things, they were afraid to really speak out. They didn't know how to do it, but they just felt weird. So for Mark Driscoll to call this out is, I see nothing wrong with that. Now, let's hear what he has to say. We'll back it up just a little bit. There was a platform. It was a high place. On it was... The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. So far, nothing he has said has been inaccurate. And he opened, it was interesting that he opened by saying, I don't mean this as a correction or a rebuke. It's an observation. He doesn't name anybody personally. He doesn't point out that this is so-and-so's fault. So-and-so did this. He's kept it very above board in terms of there is something that happened. There is an event that that something happened at the beginning of this conference that I that I feel led by the Spirit of God to address. I'm okay with it right now. Now, we also have to address the fact that Mark Driscoll has a very checkered past. I don't know if that played into this at all, uh, but so far what he has said, I have no issue with. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't us and our God is humble. He descends. And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried. Okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. Now, before we hear from Lindell, what's very interesting here is so far, nothing that Mark has said has been out of line. It didn't appear so anyway. Okay. At first blush, it doesn't appear that anything he said has been out of line. Um, he has not, I mean, he's not done anything that, that Jesus didn't do in overturning the, 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 uh, the merchant's tables in the temple, it's nothing that Jesus do in his, in his, in his outward rebuke of Pharisees. Um, in terms of 
you know, obviously wasn't the same theological issues. Um, he was, he seemed very polite and respectful in what he was trying to say and what he was trying to say to the men. So I have no problem with what Mark Driscoll did to this point. Now let's hear from John Lindell. And why he kicked him off. Wow, as he starts to speak, he has clearly brought, bought the ire of the people that paid to be at this conference, who evidently wanted to hear what Mark Driscoll had to say, because evidently there was a pervasive feeling amongst the participants that the whole opening entertainment was not uh, proper. So they've got people shouting at him, get off the stage, get off the platform. Very interesting. Now, this is very interesting because uh, it's from what he just said, you've got you've got John Lindell trying to apply Matthew 18, which doesn't necessarily apply in this case, because Matthew 18, if your brother sins against you, you go to him privately. It doesn't say if your brother sins publicly in front of the entire church, go to him privately. And what and in, in what Mark said, he's like, I'm not openly rebuking anybody. I'm, this is not a correction or rebuke of anyone personally. This is an observation of what happened at the beginning of this conference. Clearly, John Lindell took that personally. Now, so could Matthew 18 apply? It could. Does it necessarily apply? No, it doesn't. However, John said something that, that gives me pause, and that is that I, he said he talked with Mark for a half an hour before Mark went on stage. Now, if that is true and that is accurate, then Mark absolutely should have addressed his angst, his concern, uh, his burden from the spirit at that point in time with John. I don't know why he didn't do that. Now, maybe this is something that the spirit of God moved him when he got on stage and maybe it wasn't an issue in that in that 30 minutes before. Maybe he wasn't thinking about it. Maybe he was preparing. I don't know. Maybe when he got up on stage, you know, God did what God does sometimes. And he said, go, you need to say something. And that is entirely possible. I don't know. I'm not inside either one of their, either one of their, their heads. But now you've got what appears to be a little bit of wrong on both sides. However, um, my big problem with Lindell at this point is he appears to be proud and hurt you know, his pride is hurt. He's up here trying to defend something um, that really, it would have been much easier to say, you know what, uh, Mark Mark might have been out of line and I, I wish you to come to me privately, but frankly, what Mark said was right. And so uh, I want to, as the leader of this conference, I want to, I want to, you know, address you and address the elephant in the room and repent for what might have been inappropriate entertainment. Maybe it wasn't. Uh, but obviously uh, that is created by your reaction to my pulling Mark off stage. That has created something in this conference now that I need to address and that I as the leader am responsible for. So the fact that Mark handled it the way he did may not have been the best move. The fact that John Lindell handled it this way is as cringeworthy really as the entertainment itself, because I just don't, it just feels wrong that he's up there in pride uh, defending why he kicked someone off the stage when uh, clearly the the participants in the co in the conference didn't want him kicked on stage. They wanted to hear what he had to say. And he didn't outwardly do anything wrong or offensive to anybody to warrant it. 
Frankly, if Lindell is so hip on Matthew 18, what he should have done is let Mark Driscoll finish out his thought as long as he didn't stray into something that was abusive or vulgar or anything else. And then when Mark's talk was over, say, hey, I want to talk to you because Matthew 18 is so big on my mind. I'm not going to rebuke you personally or openly. I'm going to talk to you privately. I think you should have talked to me privately. So the whole thing is just out of line from the get-go. And this is what is making its way around all the social medias, um, partly because it's, it's too Christian squabbling and partly because it is emblematic of what is happening to the American church. We have in so many ways abandoned the simplicity and truth of the gospel for entertainment, for seeker sensitive, uh, the seeker sensitive movement and all sorts of things that uh, have gotten pastors into trouble, that have gotten the church into trouble, embracing ideas we should never embrace, such as LBGTQ, affirming, whether you're an affirming church or not affirming church, that shouldn't even be a question. And here we have that all wrapped up in uh, a very simple you know, issue of what was the entertainment for a men's conference? I've been to plenty of men's conferences. I didn't need entertainment. I was there to hear the word of God. I was there to learn how to apply it to my life. I didn't need entertainment. And so I think that's that was the wrong foot from the conference in the first place. But then you've got two Christian ministers who can't seem to work out their differences for whatever reason. And so now this has become viral. And it's sad because it looks to me as the one that's more in the wrong is Lindell. I know there's been some responses and we're going to have to tackle those as well. But man, thanks for joining me as we start having hard conversations. All of us as Christians need to own our own faith. We need to read the Bible for ourselves. We don't need to trust a minister to hand feed us. The Bible says that we should be fully mature, no longer needing uh, baby food, but being able to rightly divide the word of truth for ourselves. We need to be able to read it and apply it. And conferences like this are great to get together collectively and corporately with men and, and, and to hear from, from very knowledgeable men of God. But if you're not doing your own study in the first place, and if you're not able to look at this and rightly divide it for yourself and go, wait a minute, something's wrong here. You can't apply Matthew 18 publicly if you haven't done it privately yourself. That's hypocritical. Or is it hierarchy? Whichever one. The whole thing is inappropriate. It's sad. It's sad that we're having these sorts of in squabbles uh, within the Christian church when we should be fighting the very enemies that are at our door. Demonic uh, agendas, demonic principles in, in terms of movements with postmodernism, the idea that we need to untether the New Testament from the Old Testament, the idea of affirming of LGBT, the idea of uh, affirming of abortion. These things are what are the battles that we should be fighting, not this nonsense. And it's sad. Hey, thanks so much for joining me here at Courageous Media. Thank you, Courageous Army, for coming along this journey with us as we start to have more and more uh, tough conversations and awesome conversations and sometimes hard conversations. Man, we're still going to laugh. We're still going to cry with, uh, with each other. But please smash that like button. Share this channel with everyone you know as we drive towards 10,000 subscribers. Love all your support. Thank you for everything. Uh, remember that God is good. Even in the midst of all this, he's good and he's sovereign and it'll all be good in the end. Hey, if it's not yet good, man, it's not yet the end. Peace out.